Hi guys, this week's video is about brushes and caring for them. So I have been painting for about 17 years or so, give or take, and I work with different paints, acrylics, oils, watercolor, and gouache lately. So I thought that I would share a little bit of my personal experience and knowledge with you. By no means are these the only answers or hard set rules, of course, do what works for you and never stop learning from any sources. Now because I work in different mediums, I like to have different brushes for different purposes. I'd like to keep, and I would recommend that you do the same, your brushes separate that are for different types of paint because not all of the paints wash out the same and they have a very different feel and you might like certain types of certain types of hair for one paint that you might not like for another type of paint. So I keep my brushes in various jars like this and I have a bunch of different jars that I have not labeled because I know what is what but specific jars are for specific types of paints so these are some of my oil painting brushes that I only use for oil painting and that's because washing them is a little bit of a different process versus some of the other paints. The way that I keep my oil painting brushes clean is with the Silly Coil um, jar system. So this jar you can buy like this or something similar where it has a coated spring inside and you can put any cleaning type of solution you want in there. I mean you can even use this with water. Um, most people use it for oil painting so they'll put some kind of odorless mineral spirit in it and that soft coil in there has no sharp edges and you run your brush along it so that you can loosen up the hairs and get the pigment released from there. Once you do that, you can use a paper towel, dry it off, reshape it, all that good stuff, and um, put it somewhere to dry. I like to leave my brushes laying flat to dry, but it is also really recommended to put your brushes upside down to dry, which is not always easy to do, but that's why they sell things like this. So there's a coil here, and you can pop your brush in and let it dry upside down if it'll actually hold your brush. So some of these don't hold very well, especially if your brush has a fatter handle. So there are hacks you can do, put a rubber band around it, a bunch of things you can try. On um, Pinterest I have found a lot of other ideas as well, things for you to try to get your brushes to hang upside down while they dry. Regardless of what kind of paint you use, I do recommend periodically washing them out with an actual brush soap. So one of the ones I like to use is the Masters Brush soap and preserver. It comes in this little plastic container. You open it up, wet your brush, and swirl it around to get some of that soap on there. You can work it into those bristles, rinse it out, repeat as necessary to get all the paint out of the hair, and then you can even use this to reshape your brush. You take a little bit of it, uh, more concentrated, almost kind of creamy, and apply it to your brush and reshape it as needed. This can be used to fix brushes that have um, lost their shape that have maybe been a little bit abused or damaged over time. Another one I like is made by Treckle. They make a brush restorer that I believe is coconut oil based and it smells very nice and clean. Same way you can apply a little bit on your fingers, work it into a clean brush and let it dry completely with that on it to help restore and condition a brush that might need a little bit of love and attention. Acrylic brushes need constant care. Um, you'll want to wash these out after every session that you have with them to ensure a nice long life. Um, what I do is I have a couple jars of brushes that are specifically for uh, acrylic and as I'm using them they don't go back into the jars unless they have been thoroughly washed. So I'll just leave all the ones that are in use out. And while I'm working I try to rinse them out well in my container to get as much paint out of them as I can. But at the end of the day, if I'm done painting, I will take these to the sink as well and we'll give them a good cleaning with the Masters brush soap to just make sure that they're thoroughly clean. Every once in a while, I will actually stop and wash it out in between if I feel like the paint is really caught up in there. And I have a specific water container that I use for acrylic painting. This one here has two wells and you can see that I never clean it. I just rinse it out when I'm done. Um, but this one has two wells and at the bottom of one well are some ridges that you can uh, use to loosen up the paint on your brush as you kind of drag it across that, that rigid surface. But what I would highly recommend is to never leave your brushes fully submerged in your water container, whatever shape or size container you might have. It's a really bad idea, um, especially if you're using a fine tip brush, something that is delicate. like. 
any small round, you definitely don't want to leave fully submerged in there because it can bend the hairs and do a lot of damage to the shape of that brush. If you leave your brushes submerged, it, also what can happen is um, you can loosen up some of the glue and connection stuff that's going on in here. This is the the metal portion is the ferrule, and we have the bristle or hair end, and then you have your handle. So if that is submerged, the hair can wick up some of that moisture, and it can start to saturate your wooden handle if it is wood, and a lot of damage can happen there. The wood might swell, and your lacquer finish co coating that handle could actually crack and peel, and that can end up inside your painting, or just all over your floor or you, and it can be a big mess. This is an example of a damaged brush, so you can see that the lacquer all along the handle has really gotten pretty destroyed over time, and that is largely due to water damage. Sometimes that can happen even if you do take care of your brushes, so don't be discouraged. If the hair is still good, by all means keep using it. You can try different things to keep that handle intact. Um, you can re-glue the ferrule end onto a handle if need be using something strong like super glue or gorilla glue as long as it's not getting into the hair that can extend a brush a little bit longer another big recommendation i have is to invest in quality brushes and now your investment doesn't have to be huge you can find really nice quality brushes at moderate prices and there are a variety of ones that i personally like for different types of mediums if you are shopping sometimes your selection in person might be quite limited but make sure you do um, take a careful look at them. You'll want to spend a little bit extra on those brushes and maybe just buy fewer because they will last long if you take care of them well and you don't want to be fighting your materials that can hold you back a little bit if you are frustrated with your tools you might not grow as fast or even continue on your learning path. Some brushes can be ridiculously expensive. I've looked in catalogs and seen some brushes upwards of a thousand dollars and there's no way I'm going to pay that. Most of the brushes I um, buy are quite moderately priced. A few of my larger oil painting brushes were a bit more expensive um, in like the forty dollar range um, more or less and I always look for deals so even if you want a good quality item, you can sometimes find them for cheaper. Another brush brand that I like a lot lately that I have found to be pretty inexpensive but well worth it are the Trokel brushes. I had won some on an Instagram contest and that was the first time I tried them but after that I really fell in love with them and I have invested in several more. They also have artist curate sets which I think is really cool. You get to see what they like and use and um, if you work in a similar medium it's kind of interesting to see what maybe some of your art heroes do as well. Or you can buy um, just about any of those brushes in open stock. So you can pick and choose which ones you want. And again all of their brushes are pretty high quality and moderately priced so I highly recommend them if you have a chance. I'm not sponsored in any way. I wish I was but I currently am not. So I mentioned maybe you should keep your brushes separate depending on the medium, but if you have brushes that maybe aren't quite as perfect as they used to be, there's nothing to say that you can't start using them for a different medium later. For example, I like really um, sharp pointed watercolor brushes such as this Princeton Velvet Touch in a long round and I have these in a couple different sizes. And before I got these, I was using the Cotman in the same size, and the Cotman one has kind of worn out a bit. It really doesn't come to such a fine point anymore, but instead of throwing this guy away, instead of using him on watercolor where that fine point is critical, I've actually started using this one for ink and um, gouache, because those are heavier bodies, so I don't have to worry if there's a little bit of gunk stuck in there that it's going to change the shape of the brush because with a watercolor um, brush you'll really want that um, shape to be maintained for well, at least what I think for the best um, usage of it. So I do recommend keeping your old brushes even if they do look pretty beat up because there's usually some way that you can use it. For another example I have this brush here. This has been with me many many years. This was a, a decent also Princeton brush from my early oil painting days and you can see the edge here is really awful now. 
um, but I have not thrown it away because this can still be useful for textures, for blending, um, for more aggressive brush strokes. It doesn't have a fine tip anymore. This was at one point a an eight round as well, but it's quite flared out now. Um, but still, there are uses for those gnarly old brushes as well. And sometimes with a little TLC and some of the Masterson brush cleaner or some of that brush restorer, you can actually bring a brush back to life that looked like it was completely done for. So give it a shot before you toss it or use it for those other areas I had suggested. Especially if you're playing with textures or a little bit more loose painting, those gnarly brushes can actually help you out. No matter what type of paint you use, I recommend washing your brushes at some point or another. Um, depending on what kind of paint that is, you might want to wash them more frequently. Such as watercolor, I wash those brushes probably the least frequent, but I still do wash them periodically, especially if I'm doing a lot of watercolor or I'm ha having a hard time getting the pigment out of a brush. Um, some, pigment, some pigments tend to be very staining as well, so like on a white bristle brush, I don't really like the way it looks when it is dirty because then I can't tell if it's ever really clean so I'll wash those out right away to prevent staining on something like this. Um, this one in particular I usually use for just clean water washes so it still looks beautifully clean. So that's it for this week guys. If this kind of video helps you out at all, um, please consider subscribing. Make sure you hit that bell for notifications on when those new videos are released. I put out new videos at least once a week, every Saturday. Links to some of the items that I mentioned are down below in the description. They are affiliate links, so if you're interested in any of those things, I would greatly appreciate it if you actually used one of those links to purchase. You can find me all across the internet. My website is ashtonkaylee.com. On Instagram, I am at Ashton underscore Kaylee. On Facebook, I am Ashton Kaylee. On Twitter, I am Ashton Kaylee. My preferred social media is Instagram, so if you're on there, make sure to give a follow, send me a DM, feel free to tag me in anything, and we can connect there. Thanks for watching, guys, and happy painting!